All right, in this lesson, we're gonna be talking about issuing bonds. We're gonna look at the journal entry for all three of the bond pricing methods that we talked about in the last lesson. And then I'll give you a little bit more information on why bonds are issued at a premium or a discount or face value. So let's get started here with understanding kind of the overview of journalization and issuing bonds. So bonds are issued in one of three categories. They are either issued in a discount, face value or premium. Now, other than a few issues with discounts and premiums, the issuing of bonds are treated the same way as issuing a notes payable from an accounting standpoint. So we're gonna look at what the journal entry looks like from an issuing standpoint of a discount face value and premium. And there is a little bit of modification that we're gonna have to deal with when it comes to discounts and premiums. And that's what we're gonna go through as we go through each one of these journal entries. So let's get started here by looking at a bond that that's issued at face value. What does that mean? That means that we are issuing a bond for $1,000. And again, most bonds are issued for $1,000. So we're issuing a bond for $1,000. Um, and the face value, the value of the bond is also $1,000. So it's same money basically at the end of the day. There is an interest rate stated on the bond, uh, but we're still gonna issue it for a thousand and we're also going to receive a thousand. So assume a company A issued 1,000 bonds at their face value of $1,000. Prepare the journal entry for the recording of the bond. So we're gonna issue a thousand bonds and those bonds are priced out at $1,000 a piece. So we're gonna to need to do some math here to figure out how much money we are going to borrow or receive for issuing those 1,000 bonds. So to do that, we're gonna take the number of bonds, we're gonna multiply it by the face value, and then we're gonna multiply it by the bond price, okay? That's gonna give us our bond issue. So in this case, we are issuing 1,000 bonds at a face value of $1,000, which usually it will always, uh, well, it won't be always be a thousand, but it'll be in that realm. So $1,000, sorry, 1,000 bonds at $1,000 times the bond price. Now, the bond price has already been given to you. It's $1,000, um, but we will sometimes price these bonds. And the way that we price it is we price them in hundreds. So uh, the bond price of issuing at fair value is 100 over 100. Why? Because that equals one, okay? So that equals... One million dollars. Okay, uh, so if we issue one thousand bonds at one thousand dollars a piece, we're going to get a, th a million dollars for that issuance. So, what did we receive? We received cash, so we're going to debit cash in the amount of one million dollars, and then we're going to credit. What are we going to credit? We're going to credit bonds payable because we owe money to our bond holders in the form of a bond. So we're not gonna put notes payable, we're gonna put bonds payable. So that is the entry that we would put into our books when we're issuing a bond at face value. All right, so let's move on to bonds issued at a premium. So what is a premium? Issuing a premium means that the face value of the bond is $1,000, but when we sell it out to the public, we are gonna get more than $1,000. So we might get $1,015. Now you might go, if I'm issuing a debt that's $1,000 and someone's giving me a $1,015, why are they paying more than what it's worth? Well, let me give you an example of why they're paying more. So let's say in the market, they can take their $1,000 and invest their money for let's say 5% return. So they can take their $1,000, go to the bank and get a 5% return. But we decided that we're gonna issue a bond with a 6% interest, meaning that we're gonna get, we're gonna give one more percent interest than the banks will, the market. We call that the market. So whatever everybody else does in the market. So we're gonna give 6%, but the market's only gonna give five. So the question is, what's the demand on our bond? Well, if we're offering more, there's gonna be a higher demand. And what's our supply? Well, our supply is fixed. In this case, it's fixed at a thousand bonds. So there's not enough for everybody that may want to buy it with a 6% interest. Therefore, in order for them, in order for the market to work properly, 
we need to sell ours for more, or we can sell ours for more than what our bonds face value. So people are willing to spend more money to get the 6%. Now they're only willing to spend more up to the point in which their effective interest rate is 5%, right? So they're not gonna spend 1,100 if at the end of the day, they would get a 3% return, right? So if you factor in their additional $100 that they're putting in to buy it, they need to get at least a 5% return, maybe even a 5.1% return because um, it's a little bit more than what the market's giving them. Otherwise, they would go to the market and get it, okay? So why issue it a premium? Because usually the bonds is stated interest rate is higher than what they someone can get in the market. So people are willing to pay more to get our 6%. So assume company A issued 1,000 of its $1,000 bonds at 105.25. So this is called the bond pricing. So we're issuing at 105% or 105.25%. Uh, prepare the journal entry for recording of the bond. So we're gonna calculate this using the 105.25. And so the number of bonds we're issuing is 1,000 bonds at a face value of $1,000 times our bond pricing. Our bond pricing is 105.25, so we're gonna put 105.25, and we're gonna divide that by 100. And when we do that, we're gonna get 1,052,500 dollars. So we're gonna get 52,500 dollars more from that issuance of our bonds. Why? Because we're gonna pay a better interest rate than the market. So once we've done that, the question is, how do we book it? Well, first of all, how much cash are we receiving? We're receiving $1.52 million. So I'm gonna debit cash in the amount of $1,052,500. Then what else am I gonna do? Well, I need to do a bonds payable, so I need to put up a liability, but I'm not gonna put up a liability of $1.525 million because I'm only obligated to pay back $1 million, the actual bonds face value. The face value is $1,000 and we issued a thousand of them that would give us a million dollars. So I'm gonna credit bonds payable for a million dollars. So then the question is, what do I do with the other 52,500? So we know that this is gonna be a credit and we're going to use a new account that you're learning for the first time here. This one's gonna be a premium on bonds payable. So we're gonna credit premium on bonds payable. So by doing this, we're saying that we're only owing a million dollars, but we've got this premium of 52.5. What is the premium? Think of the premium as this. We received 52,500 of extra cash. We can literally take that money, put it in the bank account, and then when it's time to pay our investors or our bondholders interest, we can take some of that 525 and pay it back to our bond holders. What does that do? That effectively reduces the amount that we have to come up with to pay the interest, okay? So think of it that way. We've got this additional 52.5 that we can use now to pay interest later on, um, which effectively reduces the amount that we actually have to pay because the 52.5 was paid to us as a premium. So that's what we're doing here. All right, let's move on to the discount. So the discount, again, kind of the same logic here. So if the market's giving 6% and we're only gonna offer 4% on our bonds, there's gonna be a weak, weak ability to buy our bonds because they can get 2% more in the market than buying our bonds. So the only way we can persuade people to buy our bond is that we would sell it for less than $1,000. So maybe we sell it for $950 because effectively they're gonna get $50 extra when the bond matures and that $50 extra compensates them for the difference in interest rate. Now some people might at this point say, well, if 
the market's giving six and you're giving four, why don't you just go ahead and give 6%? Well, there may be other considerations here of why from maybe a expected market interest rate in the future. Maybe in the future, we expect it to be uh, 4%, so we don't wanna put 6% on there. Um, maybe we expect to uh, buy it back sooner, and so there may be a reason why we wanted it 4% rather than 6%, or maybe we wanna refinance. So there's a lot of reasons why so don't get too wrapped up on you know why would someone issue it at four when the market's six you want to issue it at six that way you don't have to be short that fifty dollars well you'd probably be short to fifty dollars anyways either through six percent interest or four percent interest and that discount so that's kind of what's happening here market is a higher interest rate than uh the interest rate on the bond okay so assume company A issued 1,000 of their $1,000 bonds at 97.45. So they're being issued lower than what the bond's face value is. Prepare the journal entry for recording of the bond. So it's again, the same logic here, 1,000 bonds at $1,000 at 97.45 divided by 100 gives us $974,500. So that's the cash we are getting. So that's what we're gonna debit, debit cash of 974500 We know that we have a liability. We have a liability of a million dollars, a thousand dollars times a thousand bonds. So we're gonna credit bonds payable for a million dollars. And then the difference obviously will be a debit. That's going to be twenty-five five hundred. And instead of going to premium on bonds payable, we're going to go to the discount. So we're going to debit discount on bonds payable. Okay, so effectively, we're gonna have to come up with a little bit more money than we borrowed to not only pay the interest, but also to pay this difference, this 25.5. Why do we have to pay 25.5? Because the market's giving 6% and we're only giving 4%, so we don't want, we're gonna need to deal with that at some point. So we've gotta come up with an additional 25.5 to make up the difference from what we received and what we're gonna have to pay back, which is basically like interest for us, okay? So that's the bond issue at discount. Now, uh, one of the terms that you're gonna hear in this section is carrying value. The carrying value is what the bond's actually worth in our book. So the carrying value of the bond represents the amount at which the bonds are worth in your books if you're issuing the bond. And if you notice here, this is how we would calculate carrying value. So if we issued at a premium, the carrying value would be the bonds payable plus the premium, which would give us the $1.525 million that we issued our bonds for. For face value or fair value, the bond uh, carrying value is exactly what the face value is because we didn't issue it at a discount or a premium, so it's gonna be $1 million. And then the bonds issued at a discount would be the $1 million that, we, um, that the bonds are worth, and we're gonna subtract it by the amount of the discount. So in this case, it is issued, its carrying value on our books is $974,500 instead of a million dollars. Now, this is going to be very important when we start to calculate interest later on. So that's why um, you should know what carrying value is. So what are we carrying the bonds at when we take advantage of either the premium or we have to think about our discount? So that's how we calculate the carrying value. So make sure you understand that, especially when we get to the effective interest method and how do we calculate the interest using that method. So that is the journal entries for issuing a bond. It really isn't that different from a notes payable. What's different is the premium and the discount and how do we deal with that? We just take the difference and then either debit one or credit the other so that we can have that difference but leave our bonds payable at a million dollars. So hope you enjoyed this lesson. We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.